Hello students, welcome to EPG e Shala. I am Garima Jain, Assistant Director at Jindal Institute of Behavioral Sciences, OP Jindal Global University. Today I am going to discuss with you about the module on role of NGOs in victim assistance, which is a part of broader paper on victimology and victim assistance. By the end of this manual, you will be able to learn the following outcomes. First is the meaning of victim and victimization in a broader sense, structure of NGOs, their formation and the law which governs them in India, role of NGO as an intermediary between various public and governmental institutions and agencies for extending victim assistance. And the lastly, challenges of NGOs in Indian context. Let us start our discussion by first of all understanding what is an NGO. A non-governmental organization or NGO is a non-profit voluntary group initiated by citizens organized on a local, national or international level. It is a task oriented group which is driven by people pursuing a common interest. NGOs all over the world perform a variety of service and humanitarian functions. In simpler terms, a non-governmental organization is a legally constituted organization which is operated by a person or a group of persons who act independently from any government. The term non-governmental organization has no agreed legal definition and may be termed as civil society organization in many jurisdictions. Now let us understand how NGOs are different from NPOs. NPOs here refers to non-for-profit organization. NGOs are different from NPOs uh, where non-governmental organizations are often called non-for-profit organizations. But this denomination is too capitalist and money oriented. In addition, it is also partly wrong. There is a philosophical difference between the two terms. A NPO is an organization working for a task or group of people without earning or making any profit. A NGO is an organization dedicated to a public task and work for common masses without any governmental interference and the profit made is spent on the progress and development of the mission of NGO. But they do not provide any services to the citizens and victims as an NGO does. For example, a prison is certainly a non-for-profit organization and the part of city administration that deals with traffic safety. It is not profit oriented. However, they do not provide any services to the citizens just like an NGO does. NGOs offers services to citizens who wants to take advantage of them. It represents them and work towards solving their grievances. NGOs can cater to the needs and focus on a particular public task or can deal with a number of them. It, ad it advances its services to the general public and it is for the public to seek the help of the NGOs. Since we are discussing the role of NGOs in victim assistance, it is imperative that we understand what is a victim and what is victim assistance. Let us understand what who is a victim, first of all. Victim can be understood as a person who has been directly harmed by a crime. However, it is essential to understand that this definition of victim should be understood in a broader sense. This would mean that a direct harm on a person makes him a victim, but the crime's impact is seen not only on the person who is in direct harm, but also on the people who are close to the victim, who are his family members and friends, etc. On the other hand, victim assistance implies providing assistance to the victim. An assistance that is holistic in nature and goes beyond the concept of criminal justice system. It means not only providing the person justice, but rehabilitating the victim, training him or her to get involved in the society once again. 
it involves providing the person an opportunity to come out of the shell of victimization and build a life for him or her. It is necessary to understand the true and the broader meaning of victim assistance than just the one which is used in the society. Now let us understand what is the role of an NGO. NGOs across the world have different aims and objectives but all of them they follow one similar goal which is to help people which include bringing citizens concerns to the government, advocating and monitoring policies, encouraging political participation, providing information and spreading awareness, assisting refugees, providing humanitarian assistance, victim assistance etc. NGOs monitor social condition and organize remedies to solve social problem or to alleviate the burden of individuals, group and communities. They campaign and rally for political support. They work towards making sure that the administration and the politicians take notice of the new problems. They also act as watchers who look upon the government and administration to make sure that they act according to their responsibility for building and maintaining a civil society. A victim who is burdened by his problem goes to various stakeholders in order to seek relief. These stakeholders include police officers, lawyers, judiciary, government officials, hospitals, psychologists, etc. More often than sometimes, it becomes difficult for the victim and his or her family to approach the stakeholders and public institutional separately to seek justice. As illustrated in the figure shown, NGOs act as an intermediary and represent NGOs to approach the institutions for speedy and efficient victim assistance. As shown in the figure, NGO act as an intermediary between the different public institutions for assisting the victim. NGOs have a major role to play as they work towards abridging this gap between the citizens and the stakeholders. They help a citizen or a group of citizens and represent their case on the forefront with the government. They act as an intermediary to avail help from all these stakeholders, hence making it easier for the victim or citizen or person seeking their help. Let's understand how and what is the concept of NGOs in India. The concept of NGOs has been in existence since the long time in our country. The Companies Act of 1956 regulated the concept of non-profit organization under the Section 25. The New Companies Act of 2013 monitors and provides for non-profits under Section 8. Under Indian law, there are three legal forms of non-for-profit or NGOs exist, which are Trust, Societies and Section 8 of the Companies Act 2013. Let us discuss them separately. Non-profit organization can be established through trust by making a trust deed. A public charitable trust can be established for a number of purposes including medical relief, poverty relief, education, etc. or for any other object of general public utility. Trust in India do not have a central law to regulate them and are irrevocable. However, there are certain states in India who have public trust acts, for example, Maharashtra, Gujarat, etc. The non-profit or NGO can be registered as a society under Indian law. Societies are organizations with members that can be registered for charitable purpose. They are managed by a group of governing council or a managing committee. The law that regulate societies is called Society Registration Act of 1860 and every society framed for a charitable purpose has to be registered under the Registrar of the Society Act. There is a more convenient way of establishing a non-profit or NGO, however, Indian societies have different legal and institutional framework from state to state. But the existence of a Society Registration Act and also the fact that the societies can be dissolved unlike trust was a major win 
for societies and hence a large number of prominent NGOs were created under the Societies Registration Act of 1860. For example, HelpAge India is a classic example of an NGO which was created under the which was registered under the Society Registration Act of 1860. Third is the Section 8 of the Company Act of 2013 is the most convenient way to establish a non-profit or NGO. The biggest advantage of this method is while establishing an NGO, it's a unique uniform system of the Act across the board country. Under the Section 8 of the Company Act 2013, a company with a limited liability can be performed for promoting commerce, art, science, religion, charity or any other useful object, provided that no profits, if any, or other income arrive through promoting the company's object may be distributed in any form to its members and should be used only in the progress of the company. This section provides the privilege to such companies and allows them not use private limited tag after their name. Let us now understand the organizational structure of NGO. How does it look like? NGO works in a very organized manner. As shown in the hierarchy chart, NGO is divided amongst various officers and workers who cater to a particular aspect of various tasks of the organization. The board of member is the group of people who make more, most important and highest level decisions related to the working of NGOs. Most of these decisions focus on funds, new projects, amalgamation in the case it is being considered etc. Director is the main head of the NGO who looks after the actual working of the NGO which includes ground level, field work to high ended research work. Below the director, as the hierarchy table portrays, there are a number of officers, which are program manager, administrative officer and account officer. Among these, the program manager is the head of various program that is being run by the NGO. There are a number of project co coordinators who work under them. These coordinators take care of the significant things that is essential in a particular case. Then there are field workers under these coordinators who from the basis and the backbone of the NGO. These field workers have responsible or difficult job going into the field and dealing with victims and other imminent persons who need help. Administrative officers looks after the administrative jobs and the account officer is responsible for managing the funds of the NGOs. Now let us come to the most important section of this module, which is understanding the interplay between victim assistance and the NGOs. The idea of victim assistance should not be understood as a mere concept of rescuing the victims, but they should be seen as an initiative to bring holistic justice to, the, to them. Victim assistance should be understood as access to justice, fair treatment, compensation, victim services and rehabilitation. The Indian, Indian justice system is a criminal centric justice system, hence it gets difficult to shift the focus on the needs of the victim. The problem of victims have been neglected in India and around the world, which renders victim in a struggling situation to access justice. Hence the work or task of NGOs involvement in victim assistance comprises of various tasks. The first is recognizing a victim. Victim assistance begins with recognition of a victim. A generic definition of victim is a person who has been directly harmed by a crime. This definition sometimes falls short in recognizing the victims. Some cases includes disastrous tra tragedies which touches and harms not only the person directly involved as a victim but his or her family or close ones. It becomes essential in such situations to recognize the victims and provide assistance to them. Once we put an effort on lifting the wheel and look beyond the surface, a more sensitized system on victim assistance will be emerged, which is also a need in the current scenario. The second important, important step is rescuing a victim. 
the foremost task of the NGO in victim assistance program is to recognize and rescue a victim from the act in itself. It can include extraction or save. The case study of Tina, a 14-year-old girl rescued from the web of sex trafficking by an NGO called Mark, present an apt example of how a victim can be rescued. Third is the rehabilitation. Most important and often most neglected aspect of victim assistance is rehabilitation. The job does not end once the justice is sought or a victim is rescued, but measured beyond the judicial prospect should be taken. It is the need of our to rehabilitate a victim back into the real world to make the victim come out of the box of self-loath, depression and emotional trauma to make the victim self-reliant and financially independent and most importantly to provide for a protected and accepting environment for the victim to walk. As mentioned in the above case study by UNO DC of Tina, after rescuing her, Mark decided to work in the direction of rehabilitating her. Tina did not want to go back to her village and requested to stay in Delhi. The NGO arranged for her to relocate a state-run shelter home in Delhi, where she was enrolled in a school and started studying. This was the first step towards a bright future and towards her rehabilitation. The fourth and the most important part of victim assistance is follow-up. The final, it is of absolute necessity and it, is, it fills the victim with a sense of acceptance and security. They do not feel abandoned and understand that the organization has not forgotten them. Following up is also essential to keep a look out on the progress of the victim and to keep a record of the activities of the institution or support group where the victim resides. Let us now understand the functions of NGO with respect to victim assistance with the help of a case study. Childline is an NGO working for child victim assistance. The case study reflects upon the idea of rescuing and rehabilitating a victim of child abuse. Shanta, a nine-year-old girl from Kanyakumari, was a victim of child abuse by her neighbor. Childline helped her parents to register the complaint against the abuser and save her from the abuse. Shanta's family was however harassed even after the lodge of the complaint as the police refused to cooperate because of the influence of the abuser. Childline took the case to the State Women Commission which helped in charging the abuser. This is a classic example of rescuing the victim. Second is that after Shanta was sent to the counselling, child care made sure that she is taken to a counsellor which would help her realise that it was not her fault and she was a victim of heinous crime. Shanta was further transferred to a different city and in order to provide her a better environment and different schooling, rehabilitation was provided to the victim in the later case. Let us understand what are the other roles of NGOs be besides uh, rehabilitation, rescuing and follow-ups. What is the other role that NGO plays? NGO not only work in victim assistance but also work in establishing a better society by preventing victimization and reducing crimes. Hence their work should also be understood as protecting people from being or becoming a victim. The first is research, monitoring and evaluation. Many NGOs are working towards innovative activities and they encourage research on various topics and activities to help the victim and societies at large. These activities and researchers are carefully documented and shared with the society. For example, research on how to rehabilitate child abuse victim which may include psychological therapies necessary for them, etc. It is imperative method to circulate ideas and to figure out the appropriate means to apply them practically. Second function is technical assistance and training. Training, if and done in a right manner, 
could turn out to be the most effective way of educating people and institutions and bringing a change in the society. Training provided to institutions can develop a technical assistance and bring in technology into the picture. For example, training school teachers as to how to deal with a sensitive case of molestation, etc. could prove out to be very useful as it will ingrain sensitivity amongst teachers which would mean a trained and qualified helping hand at the very first and primary stage. Third is development and operation of infrastructure. NGOs also work to help the society by providing important resources on, of infrastructure like public toilets, community schools, school waste collection service, etc. The last one is supporting innovation, demonstration and pilot projects. NGOs are better and quicker when compared to the government as they have advantage of less bureaucratic system and selecting particular places for innovative projects. NGOs at times can also be pilots for larger government projects by virtue of their ability to act more quickly than the government bureaucracy. What are the challenges which are faced by NGOs in India? There are approximately 2 million non-profit organizations in India, one for every 600 people. The CBI figured the presence of 1.3 million NGOs in the state and union territories. The need to contemplate arise from the fact that even with the existence of such a high number of NGOs, there is a significant amount of people and citizens who still lack the excess of resources and do not get justice with respect to their victim status. It is essential for NGOs to work in the direction to provide assistance to these victims. It, is, it becomes essential for them to recognize, rescue, rehabilitate and follow up with them. However, there are certain challenges which are faced by NGOs with respect to funding and with respect to trained personnel. First is funding. The biggest problem with the successful functioning of NGO is to arrange for funding. Social programs like victim assistance cost money and need funding from various sources. Most of the time, it gets difficult for NGOs to arrange for funding. According to Society for Participatory Research in Asia, there are nearly 1.2 million NGOs operating in India and their total funding in 1990s 1999 was close to 18,000 crore, around 1% of the country's GDP. Moreover, NGO employs nearly 20 million people, some paid and others are not even paid. Survey also note that the major source of receipt for the NGOs are self-generated, loans, grants and donations. Foreign funds contribute only 7.4% of the total receipt of the NGO. Lack of trained and competent personnel in societal sector. NGOs need trained personnel and staff to ensure social welfare in the society. The social sector needs qualified and well-trained workforces. However, it becomes a major challenge as the competence of the personnel does not match the incentives and salaries in this sector. This creates a feeling of unease when it comes to joining an NGO. Most trained and qualified officials would not want to be associated with an NGO and would, would lean more towards a consistent source of income. Even if there are individuals who would inherently be in, interested to work with an NGO, the lack of monetary incentives is a big obstacle. NGOs need security for longer than a year. NGOs find themselves in a constant struggle for funds to survive. Therefore, summarizing, we can say that NGOs are essential to a society not only because they help victims and try to provide a sensitized victim assistance, but also provide a means to a person or a group of person to form and operate as an NGO. NGO work is important when it comes to provide holistic victim assistance. 
NGOs understand the existence existing criminal justice system in India is not enough and does not provide victim centric assistance. Hence, it becomes essential to provide victim assistance in victim centric manner. It is not enough to rescue or recognize a victim, but the important tasks come after, after that, which is rehabilitation and following up. Various case studies presented in the module will help you to understand the need of the R, which is to provide an all round and holistic victim assistance. NGOs, however, do not merely stop at this stage, but also work towards improving or building up a better society. They work in the direction of providing infrastructure, innovation, research, etc. in order to work towards a less victimized societies. Statistics shows that the number of NGOs have been increased tremendously, but the citizens and the victims still do not get the optimum benefit of their functioning. NGO face challenges related to funding and shortage of dedicated and qualified manpower. Thank you so much. Hope this video will help you to understand this module better. My best wishes and happy learning.